Amen and amen. Well, welcome Action Church to the Action Church living room, joining you in your living room, your car. Why are you watching us in the bathroom right now? Come on, just pause it, watch it later. We are so excited to worship God with you today. Man, I love our worship team, what God just did through our powerful time of worship. Exciting things coming up here at Action Church. But today, today we're going to launch a brand new series called How to Live through a bad day. We're going to take seven weeks and go through the seven statements that Jesus made as he was going to taking his purpose to the cross. And it's crazy that we, we decided to do this series back last summer in 2019, and now it was scheduled for today, and I can't think of a better topic, to study how Jesus went through his worst day so that we don't have to go through our worst day alone. You know, it says this in John chapter 16, verse 33. It says, in this world that we're going to have trouble, but it says, take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus went through his worst day so that you and I could overcome ours. And that is good news. And these seven statements are really, really important. It's the seven statements that Jesus made on his worst day, and it's seven represents the number of completion. He was completing his task, completing his journey. And the order, or the principle of the first is important as well. What did he do first on his worst day? Let's go to Scripture and look at this in Luke 23, Verse 34, before we read it, it's on your screen right now. I gotta build the scene. Jesus is hanging on the cross. He's living his worst day ever. He has been beaten, he has been tortured, he has been betrayed, and now he is hanging on the cross, dying for you and for me, a crowd in front of them. And then look at what our Lord and Savior says. It says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He practiced forgiveness in his worst moment. It's amazing to watch him lead the way. Why did he do this? Because you've got to catch this, church. You cannot face what's happening today until you settle what happened yesterday. If you are carrying yesterday, if you're carrying your hurt, your fear, what somebody did to you from yesterday, you will never have the strength to fight for today. And Jesus was prioritizing people over his own pain. And you gotta catch this revelation. I was talking to Pastor Joseph and Pastor Tyler this week and we were talking about this, this journey that Jesus was on. And in this time, this week, they would have been celebrating the feast of Passover. They would have been celebrating what, what God did leading the people out of Egypt into the promised land. They would have been celebrating Passover, but the next feast would have been Pentecost. And so what we see here is Jesus is forgiving a crowd of people. Oh, by the way, the same people that would have gathered for 5,000 of them to be fed just a short time earlier. So the same crowd that he fed is now crucifying him. He's forgiving them. And then catch this, the next time they gather for Pentecost, 3,000 people give their life to Jesus. Their eternity forever changed. So his forgiveness in that moment, his sacrifice and forgiveness in his worst day paved the way for 3,000 people to receive their best day. So how we're living our life, how we're going through this tough time is not just for us, but it's for other people as well. So we have to forgive. Write this down if you're taking notes. Forgive. Forgive everyone who is trying to ruin your life. Because they are. There are people trying to ruin their life. I'm convinced there are people at Action Church, when we start gathering together publicly again, they're going to go to Action Step 2, discover your design, and they're going to discover their gift was to ruin my life. Yeah. <laughs> like They're like, oh, I was just caused, called to cause pain to Pastor Justin. There are people that you feel like that are just going to mess you up. They're going to hurt you. What if you just decide, I'm going to forgive everyone who's trying to ruin my life? I found this this week. Moses leading the people of God out of Egypt. It's talking about dealing with all their stuff. He said, kill me now, God. If I have to deal with your people anymore, just kill me now. People are going to hurt you. And on our worst day, we've got to follow Jesus' example. And we've got to forgive everyone who is trying to ruin our life. We have a Lord and Savior that knows how we feel. I don't know about you, but that just makes me feel like I can get through anything when I'm not just sitting there thinking, has anybody ever gone through this before? We know that Jesus has, and that's not opinion. It says this in Hebrews chapter 2, verse uh, 17 and 18. I'm reading out of the message paraphrase today. It says that's why we had to enter every detail. He, Jesus, 
had to enter every detail of human life. Then when he came before God as high priest to get rid of the people's sins, he would have already experienced it all himself, all the pain, all the testing, and would be able to help where help was needed. If you need help today, Jesus is the help that you need. Because he faced everything that we have faced. He had all the sources of unforgiveness that you and I would have. He had all the things that had hurt him. And, and I have a list for us today. Get back to your notes. Go and get those out. Come on, I can't see you right now, but the Spirit of God can. Put the donut down. Warm up your coffee later. Grab the pen and paper. This is really, really good stuff. Here's the sources of unforgiveness that Jesus faced on his worst day that you're going to see are the same things that you and I are going through. Write this down. The first thing, betrayal. Jesus was betrayed by one of his closest friends. He literally spent all day, all night, every trip with Judas for three years, and he stabs him in the back. I don't know about you, but how many, how many times have you felt betrayed by a friend? Jesus felt the same way. And can you imagine just hanging there on the cross, just the betrayal, just thinking back on all of the memories, and he, he was human. He felt all of those things. And betrayal is, is a pain of the heart. And I really feel like betrayal is one that can really, really keep you in unforgiveness and keep you in bitterness. I really believe that pain of the heart is the greatest dis-ease that we go through. The greatest disease that we go through is a pain of the heart. And think about your situation right now. This virus is real. The concern is real. The pandemic is real. It is not fake news. It is a reality. But think of the worst things that are going on in our world. Fear, paranoia, chaos. When it gets in our heart, not in our body, not in our immune system, when we let this thing get in our heart, it causes a dis-ease that is even greater than the disease. And so we've got to give Jesus control of our life. But betrayal, it hurts. Jesus felt that he understands your betrayal. Here's the second one. Write this down. False accusation. False accusation. I don't know if you know this. They hired people to lie to set Jesus up. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, they were going around paying people to make up stories about Jesus so that they could punish him and crucify him. And false accusations are going to cause you pain and hurt. I wrote this down this week. People criticize in you what they don't like about themselves. People criticizing you what they don't like about themselves. Off too often the enemy is using that to keep us in unforgiveness and bitterness. Here's the third one, rejection. Rejection. One out of 12 people of his disciples stuck around for the trial. He went one for 12. This is Jesus. He had called these men, come follow me. He had fed for them. He cared for them. He showed them how to do miracles. He discipled them. And only one out of the 12 had the courage to show up. And that one denied him three times. Rejection. I mean, he fed 5,000 people the, the, the months before, the days before, and then they chose Barabbas. He had healed their kids. He had fed them. He had cared for them. And he, he, isn't that true? We all face rejection, but we have a Lord and Savior that knows how you feel, and he will meet you right there. And he's never rejected you. He's never left you or forsaken you. Even in your rejection, he's right there with you. Here's the next one. He faced abuse. His beard was plucked. He was bloodied. He was beaten. He was tortured. Capital punishment was at its worst time. Like, he went through abuse. He knows. If you're abused today, he knows what it feels like to be wrongfully accused, rejected, and abused. And here's the last one. He was humiliated. Write that down. Humiliation. Those are all sources of our unforgiveness, of our bitterness, and he knows how it feels. We don't see this on pictures because it wouldn't be appropriate, but he was stripped naked in front of thousands of people and mocked. Like he knows what it feels like to be embarrassed and humiliated. Jesus went through his worst day so you didn't have to go through yours alone. Jesus went through his worst day so you could overcome yours. I wrote this down this week and, and would love for you to think about this. He did so much more than just dying for our sins. Although that is the most important because it paved the way for our eternity. He lived and he suffered to give us an example and to help us. And he rose to give us victory. I need you to hear this today. Everybody in this room right where you are, Jesus, Jesus is qualified to help you through your worst day. His life in his last days qualified him to help you through anything. 
But I know even in this room, a group of Action Church staff, pastors, leaders, I know in your living room right now, wherever you are, there's some pushback. Pastor Justin, you don't know who hurt me. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know about my childhood or my parents or my ex-boyfriend or my ex-spouse. You don't know, but Jesus does. And so many people don't want to give forgiveness because they don't understand it. I need to tell you what forgiveness is not just for a moment. Forgiveness is not saying these things. Forgiveness is not saying that your pain is gone. Forgiveness is not saying that you were not hurt by what the other person did to you. Forgiveness is not saying that you're back to being the person you were before it happened. Forgiveness is not uh, the excusing. It's not saying you excuse the other person's behavior. Forgiveness is not saying you no longer view what happened as important. Forgiveness is not saying you share blame for what happened. Forgiveness is not restoring trust. Forgiveness is not resuming the relationship without changes. Catch this, you got to get this. Forgiveness is letting go of the offense. But it's a choice, it's not a feeling. I don't know about you, but I've never felt like forgiving. But I don't think Jesus felt like loving you and me when he died on the cross for you and for me. I don't think he felt like saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. No, he made a choice that people were more important than his pain. That his pain may be a pathway for their healing and their forgiveness. So we choose, we choose to forgive. First Peter says this in the Living Bible. It says, when Jesus suffered, he did not threaten to get even. He left his case in the hands of God. That's what forgiveness does. It says, God, I trust you more with my situation. Like, I trust you more with what happened to me. I'm not going to fight against them. I'm going to give you them. I'm going to give you my situation. I'm going to leave all of this in the hands of the Almighty God. We, we have to forgive, church. Like, if we're going to get through our worst day, we have to forgive. We cannot carry yesterday and fight today. We cannot have the baggage weighing us down and then have the freedom and the strength to get through, especially the days we have now. You may be thinking, well, Pastor Justin, why are you talking about forgiveness? in the middle of a crisis because you cannot get through this crisis if you're still stuck in what somebody did to you yesterday. You need strength, a renewed strength. You need a passion. You need a boldness. You need a perspective of the future, and you can't do that holding on to the past. you got to let it go. You've got to let it go. Here's four things on forgiveness I want to give you today. Forgive them. Come on, forgive them because I need forgiveness. Make it selfish. The first step, just, uh, I need forgiveness. Matthew 6 says, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But catch this, church. This is, this is the Bible. This is Matthew 6. This is Jesus talking. This is not Justin's opinion. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. You cannot say, God, I want your grace and I want your forgiveness, but I'm not going to let anybody else off the hook. Like, I, I'm going to receive this grace and this mercy, but I'm going to hold on to their sins. No. Jesus said one time, he who is without sin cast the first stone. Like, if you're, if you're not, you, you and I have sinned, so we shouldn't be throwing stones. We shouldn't be holding people to a standard that we ourselves could never even meet. Forgive them because I need forgiveness. Here's number two. Forgive them. Come on, forgive them without condition. Without condition. Condition. Well, I would forgive them if they would just say they are sorry. You know, if they just really repented, if they just really came and just groveled at my feet, then I, no, forgive them without condition. Forgiveness is not about their apology. Forgiveness is about your posture of your heart, your relationship with God. Forgiveness is for you. Like the restoration of relationship, the trust, all those things can be built back. But forgiveness is not even for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Your unforgiveness is killing you. You releasing that weight, releasing that bitterness, releasing that poison that's building up on the inside. You forgive them without condition. Here's what Ephesians says. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Jesus didn't put conditions on his forgiveness. He didn't hang on the cross and say, well, if you, if they, then. No, he just said, I forgive 
without condition. C.S. Lewis says this, to be Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in me. I've made mistakes. I've fallen short. I need forgiveness. And if I'm going to accept God's forgiveness, then I need to extend it to other people in my life. Here's a third thing. Write this down. Forgive them. This is my favorite one. Come on, lean in. Forgive them in advance. Be proactive, not reactive in your forgiveness. Like people are going to hurt you. They're going to take the last toilet paper and they already have a cart of 18. I don't get it. I just, I don't quite get it. Like it's not a necessity, like you could live without it, but they, people are going to hurt you. They're going to cut you off. They are going to hoard and they are going to say the wrong things. You're like, Pastor Justin, can you be more positive? I'm positive people are going to hurt you. Like today, somebody is going to hurt your feelings today. Somebody is going to say something that you didn't want them to say today. Forgive them in advance. Luke 4, uh, 11, verse 4 says, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive, get this, underlined in my notes, underline your Bible, talk about this later with your family or on your watch party with your location pastor, forgive everyone who sins against us. Forgive us of our sins as we also, as we also, we have a part to play, forgiving everyone, like in advance, that I'm just going to be a person that operates in forgiveness. Here's what it does. It takes the sting away. If you just wake up every day, like, I'm going to love God, and people, I'm sorry, turn it down for the, for the below 12, people are going to suck. Like they're going to hurt you. And if you just say, hey, I'm going to forgive them in advance today, it's going to take away. It's like you're expecting it. Come on, you, you ever know you're going to get a shot? You're like, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm expecting it. I'm bracing for it. I'm bracing for the impact. What if you just said, I'm going I'm to I'm gonna be prepared, and I'm just going to forgive them in advance? Here's the fourth one. Forgive them. And this one's so important. This is, this is true Christianity. This is only something that if you love Jesus and have accepted him in your heart, he's changed your life. This is the perspective. This is the goal. Forgive them because they are victims too. Read this week, 97% of abusers were themselves abused by someone. People are just hurting. And it does, not, it does not make it any better what they did. Um, it does not condone what they did. But if we can have a perspective that everybody is just hurting, and they're victims too, and that hurting people hurt people, and that we can give them forgiveness, not restoration of trust, not access to relationship, not all the things that we need counseling and time and to work through, but just forgiving them because we need forgiveness. We forgive them because they're victims as well. Ephesians 6 says this, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I wrote this down, love people, hate the devil. Like if we just love people and hate the devil, we will be a lot happier as believers. We've got to get this. Like we're not going to get through this season as a church. You're not going to get through this season in a family if you're holding on to unforgiveness. We don't, we don't have time for it. Right. A nation in crisis, a world in pandemic, and heaven and hell a reality, we cannot hold on to yesterday. You can't hold on to your mistakes. You can't hold on to your shortfalls. You can't hold on to your shame and your sin, but you also cannot hold on to what somebody did. At a certain point, you have to, you cannot accept Jesus and stay a victim. Like you're not a victim anymore. You go from victim to victorious the minute that you meet Jesus. Now, is there a process to learn how to live in victory? 100%. But you're not a victim. Like you went through some stuff, but Jesus paid for it. And he gave you freedom and access to power. We need to start that journey today to freedom and forgiveness. Let me close with this illustration, this example. You ever been around somebody and... And this is, these people are gross. Like, I don't want to be friends with these type of people. Maybe you've been around these people. They, they want to show, they want to talk about everything that ever happened to them. We have freedom groups for those. If, you're, if that's you today, come on, you're in a living room, you're in a safe place, just go ahead and point to that person. I'm just kidding, don't do that. Do not do that. 
But there's always talking about what happened and, and this happened and so and so happened. And we're like, when are we going to stop talking about 30 years ago? You, you honestly, you need a freedom group. You need Jesus in your life. You need this message. But that's not specifically the, the gross people that I'm talking about. The ones that like to show you their surgeries. Like they're like, hey, look at, look at when I was cut open. Look at what happened to my leg. Look at when my, my, my hand got chopped off. Look at these nerds. And they pull out their iPhone if they love Jesus. They're Android if they don't. <laughs> come on, Pastor Kenneth loves that. Come on. <laughs> Sanford Watch Party. If, if, if anything comes out of this, can we come out of this pandemic with Kenneth with a different phone in Jesus' yeah, name? <laughs> but they, they get out their, their, their iPhone and they show you all of these, these wounds and it's disgusting. And you're like, oh, my God, like Why? Why are you showing me that? Like, that's, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. But then you have another type of people. and See, wounds are gross because wounds lead to infection. But, but what's not gross, what everybody wants to hear the story behind is a scar. Like, I, I've got a huge scar right here. Maybe the cameras can get it. I had an ulnar nerve transposition. And I've, I've got scars everywhere. I, I'm like an orthopedic surgeon's dream. And so I, I am just, I am, everybody, when they see a scar, they're like, hey, cool scar, bro. Tell me the story. You've got to catch that today. Wounds lead to infection. When we're, when we're wounded, when we're, when we're unforgiveness, when we're bitter, when we're victims, we infect other people. But when we're healed, when we've allowed Jesus to heal us, we're still going to have scars. It really happened, and it really hurt. And I never want to go through this again, but I show you from a place of healing and victory and restoration. Cool scar, bro. Let your story turn into a scar because you gave it to Jesus, and then let that story and that scar point people to him. God does not cause our worst days, but all too often he uses them for his glory and for people from Passover to Pentecost, from the cross to revival, all because Jesus was willing to let go of bitterness and unforgiveness and forgive. What is holding you back from the future God has for you? It could be unforgiveness. And what if you release that today? Getting this principle that Jesus went through his worst day to help you overcome yours. Come on, bow your heads right here in this room, right where you are at home. What if you, what if you did that today? Come on, before we even get to salvation, I'm talking to Christians right now. I'm believing the spirit of God, the power of technology is, is bringing some people to mind right now that you need to forgive. Come on, something that happened in childhood, a relationship, words that were spoken, betrayal, false accusations, abuse, rejection, humiliation. Say, Pastor, I felt all of it. What if you just gave it to Jesus today? Allow him to begin to work on that wound. It's infecting you and it's infecting your whole life. It's keeping you from God's best. And you said, I forgive. Come on, you fill in the blank right where you are. If you're alone, say their name out loud. If you're in a place with other people, begin to whisper their name. Write it down. What if you said, I, I, I forgive, I release. And I take one step out of a victim mentality into the victorious life that Jesus has for you. For others of you, you're sitting wherever you are, watching, listening. And you can't give that forgiveness that we've talked about today freely because you've never been forgiven of your sins. What if today... Action Church Online, you gave your life to Jesus Christ. We've talked about all that he did for you today. What if you, what if you showed him your wounds right now? You said, Jesus, I need, I need help with this. This is where I've fallen short. These are my mistakes. You begin to confess your sins to him. Confess your, your need for him. He did everything on the cross. Gives us access to grace, mercy, forgiveness, salvation. His resurrection gives us access to victory. What if you did your part today and surrendered your life to him? Come on, it's really easy. The Bible says if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Lord, that he will make his home, his presence inside of you and change everything. Come on, do that today. Come on, for the first time, today is the day of your salvation for the first time in a long time by, by recommitting your life. There's never been a better time to do it. In a world that's full of uncertainty, what if you settled eternity today and you said, I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ. 
Come on, in church, everyone, we raise our hand. What if you just raise your hand right where you are? Going in your car, your bedroom, in your living room, at a watch party, you just raised your hand and said, I, I want to start a relationship with Jesus. I want to recommit my life to him today. It's amazing. I believe dozens of hands are going up all over the world right now. And you are receiving the forgiveness that Jesus paid for. If you raise your hand, pray this real simple prayer in your heart or out loud after me. Say, Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for saving me. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I'm saved only by your grace. And I am confessing with my mouth and I'm believing in my heart that you are the Lord. And I'm giving you that place today, complete control. God, have your way in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. God, we love you. We thank you for this time together today. We worship you. Let us walk out of here walking in forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen.